I'm Magnus Hitstem for the Developer Show. We're here at the TensorFlow Dev Summit, and next to me I have Zach Stone. Hi, Zach. Hi, Magnus. So I hear that you're the person to talk to about TPUs. Is that correct? Oh, there's a huge team working on TPUs all across the company, but I'm definitely involved. I'm really excited about bringing a lot more performance to the TensorFlow community. Cool. So can you describe what the TPU is and what you use it for? Sure. So Google has developed a system of ASICs, boards, and entire supercomputers to accelerate performance in machine learning. So we needed this for internal purposes initially. Mm. There was concern um, several years ago that if every Android phone user spoke to their phone for a few minutes a day with algorithms of the time on big fleets of CPUs, Google might need to double the number of data centers. And double. so that didn't make sense. Wow. Right? <laughs> and so um, there's this crash program to develop a chip that was specialized to accelerate some of these machine learning workloads. And so that was Google's first TPU. Wow. Which was announced at, at Google I.O. I think two years ago. So then last year we revealed that we have the second generation system, mm -hmm. the TPU V2 that's also uh, available now in cloud as a cloud TPU. Mm -hmm. It's just recently gone to beta. And so this supports training and inference. Uh, it's 180 teraflops per device. And then these devices can be connected together into these TPU pods mm -hmm. that go up to 11 and a half petaflops. And so 11 and a half petaflops. Exactly. Let me put That's that in amazing. context for you. So if you're training an image recognition model, let's say ResNet 50, it's the sort of standard benchmark right now. It was state of the art not too long ago. Mm. And if you want to train that to 75 or 76 percent accuracy, which is what you'd expect from publications on the subject, that might previously have taken you days mm -hmm. a few years ago when that paper was published. Now that's down to about 12 and a half hours oh, wow. on one of these cloud TPUs. And on the full TPU pod, you can do that in 12, uh, less than 12 and a half minutes. That's amazing. Yeah. So I bet you're all wondering out there, how can I get my hands on one of these things? That's right. Well, they're in beta right now. OK. Um, so you have to request quota at the moment, but soon we'll lift that requirement and you'll be able to just fire up a cloud TPU as infrastructure, just like you would a virtual machine. So it's not like you can go and buy one and install on your local hard uh, That's computer right. or anything. You'd go to cloud.google.com slash TPU okay. and you'd fill out the quota form. Or if you're already in touch with Google Cloud in some other way, just talk to your contact at Google Cloud. That's amazing. Yes. 180 teraflops, ladies and gentlemen. A another possibility. Uh, we also have this TensorFlow Research Cloud, which is a set of 1,000 of these. So together, that's 180 petaflops. 180? 180, 180 petaflops. Oh my gosh. And those we're making available at no cost through an application process to top uh, ML researchers mm -hmm. out in the community. Because what we're really trying to do here is accelerate the rate of progress in machine learning. And so we know that performance is one of the main gating factors. A lot of the amazing results you've seen across vision and speech and language and mm -hmm. robotics and other things have really been driven by this massive increase in the amount of available computation mm -hmm. and reduction in cost. Mm -hmm. And so we're trying to make ML acceleration universally accessible and useful, affordable for everybody, and uh, available at scale in the cloud. That's great. So 180 teraflops all the way up to 180 petaflops. <laughs> this is Magnus Hitstem. I'm here with Zach Stone. Uh, we're at the TensorFlow Dev Summit, and this is the Developer Show.